Human-Computer Interaction So, what is human-computer interaction? To try and put it simply, human-computer interaction, or HCI, is a discipline concerned with the design, evaluation, and implementation of interactive computing systems for human use, and with the study of major phenomena surrounding them. Now, to actually put it simply, in the words of John Carroll, HCI is the study of making it easy to learn, easy to use. No one single definition is perfect. HCI is a massive community of communities across a broad range of fields. But the one key thing they all have in common is a focus on usability. The idea of usability is king in all fields involving HCI. HCI is focused on understanding and improving our interactions with technology and information systems. From superficial high-level design down to the most fundamental ways in which a system processes and communicates information. HCI studies how our behavior is affected by that technology and how we co-evolve along with it. It uses knowledge from the field of cognitive science combined with engineering principles in a melding of theory and practicality. A great way to understand HCI better is to look at a bit of history. Flash back to the 1970s, or at least imagine you can do so. This is when we really start to see more people having access to computers and the emergence of personal computing. Along with this emergence came the realization that there was some serious improvement to be had in the area of usability. There's that key word. As more people started to have access to computers, there was more of a need to know how to design and implement these systems to optimize usability, whatever that may mean. In response to this emergence, the field and use of the term human-computer interaction developed. At this same point in time, many different fields of science had begun to merge under the heading of cognitive science, a big part of which was the idea of cognitive engineering, looking at the mental and motor processes of humans and how they influence and are influenced by our interactions with people and objects. So, just as the need for HCI arose with the arrival of personal computing, the field of cognitive science arose with the ideas and concepts that HCI needed. HCI was to become one of the first examples of cognitive engineering, and was, and still is, a bold merging of science and engineering. Let's take a look at some of the first examples where the ideas of HCI were to be applied. Before personal computers, such as this IBM, the main computer output was text on a screen, and the only input, a keyboard. While this is still a common input-output paradigm used today, it was hard for the casual user at first, and, as the only means of interacting, was less than intuitive. QHCI, and the invention of the mouse, and the development of the cluttered desktop design. Using the mouse, the desktop became a clear space where users could move, organize, hide, delete, and often lose, files and documents, very much like they would with physical documents on a physical desk. It was a simple, relatable, and intuitive way of displaying digital information and caught on extremely quickly, still used to this day. When the desktop first developed, it was revolutionary and exciting. But as our world evolved, and as the amount of digital information exploded, the cluttered desktop idea started to lose some of its initial magic and usability. Thankfully, the study of HCI hasn't stood still. The desktop is no longer the central key to our interactions with technology. With the rapid expansion of the web, the variety of technologies used to connect people and things in every part of the world has also expanded. The web browser has become as much our homepage as the desktop once was. The ideas of HCI have paved the way for social networks, blogs, email systems, and instant text and video chat programs to become seamless parts of our daily lives. The brisk, clean interfaces and free-to-use nature of services like Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and Gmail have opened unprecedented levels of communication between users and their systems. It is largely through the inspiration and popularization of the ideas of HCI that these systems have come to be as effective, usable, and popular as they are. HCI includes all the ideas we learned about the TED's value-added model, TEDS provides clear guidelines on how to make a system accessible on an editable, top-layer level, such as clarity of links, aesthetics, and overall smarts of a system. HCI includes this, but goes much deeper, focusing as well on the most fundamental ways we interact with technology and systems. Examples of HCI in practice are everywhere you look, from the open, customizable nature of a desktop 
to the simple, minimally customizable interface of an iPad. Even within specific arenas, there are widely differing offers. Smartphones are a great example. Microsoft and Apple have both implemented systems with simplicity and ease of use in mind, allowing little customizability. While one of the core design principles behind Google's mobile OS is the idea of open source and customizability. Today, everyone involved in a technology field has HCI in mind, though to varying degrees of success, of course. From the manufacturers of PC hardware to the animations behind vehicle GPS systems and the technicians who created the exact tone of Siri's voice. Technology is used by people. And every change, improvement, or innovation in technology is inevitably related to how people interact with that technology. As our needs evolve, so does technology and the ways in which it can help us meet those needs. HCI is right there at the forefront, expanding and evolving along with it, always making sure that as new technologies develop, we don't lose sight of that key idea, designing systems with a focus on usability, making it easy to use, easy to learn. Though, we don't always hit the mark.